Can you speak loudly, please? Because we have difficulty, even though we have a lot of hardware around, but we can not hear you. Closer to the microphone. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Please help deal mostly with the administration of health data in an electronic way. And then we can take it to the next slide. And help after an extended use of the term detail in the last uh, seven years or so, we can take it into calling mobile health or health. In this case, the practice of medicine. Uh, supported by public mobile, mobile devices. These are most commonly referred to mobile communication devices like the mobile phone or tablet nowadays, uh, or TDA area, along with health services and information, but also to affect the emotional state in a way, not only information. And there has been a lot of uh, movement around monitoring what's happening. I will come into later on in my slide. So, in the next slide, uh, is the need, uh, the calendar animation I got, of the mobile devices with uh, all the things that I mentioned. Then, if you click one more, these are needed to collect big amounts of data, such as, uh, you know, data from the app, from the app, the health monitoring. Or the lifestyle or daily activities, and the tools provide a lot of information about one's uh, health and also one's life. Then we can click to tell them to why this is important. This is important because in the research, a big amount of data, we can aim to make it diagnostic and better system, but also. We can deal with patient care for their own and lifestyle, and thereby hoping to have an increased prevention of diseases. This calls for an effective, more efficient, and sustainable health care system, and it saves a lot of time for the health professionals. If we click once again, go to the next slide. The trend shows that there is a big market around it as well. Calculate maybe. A lot of billions of euros around the European countries, but also around the world. And if we click again, the thing from a uh, report as early as 2014 of that study that this is changing the outcome of life of people. Mobile health involving uh, 
submit my uh, nation uh, you know, having a different system of design to deal with that issue back then, years ago, uh, in which we have software design in the society for this positive digital training and all monitoring system. And uh, if you keep on more, it's being given to elderly people in terms of society to touch things. And uh, if you click on more, with protocols uh, remotely connected to the laptop or the TV and allowing the interaction of people to play the site. And we have specific protocols that we have provided to give us more, to give you a whole physical training uh, protocol and exercise to follow interaction that the game sometimes make it a bit fun as well. We have given this and we have tried in various settings, healthcare centers, houses, uh, senior centers, anything that you can imagine, with thousands of people, both to live and also other countries. So, in the next slide, this kind of intervention we have with our constant training, physical training, this fight, our action of this, this was fighting for the decline. And we have shown in this numerous studies that this is now uh, becoming a very powerful tool because we have studied the effects. Uh, we are sure that with uh, these uh, uh, kind of software details and healthcare software, basically, we can improve the health of the people. So, uh, okay. in the next slide, Dealing with these services, I think the slide that they have. If you, if you click it, you can click it. I was emphasizing the relevant care network that we have now established in the grid. It's using, this is a map, it's using the different sites all around the grid domain of those societies, different centers. We have a number of points uh, where people are using the system either from the center or from the home, etc., to improve their health in this way and uh, this, uh, delay the cognitive decline. Uh, and the slides are the next, so you can click and go to the next, next slide with the quantified cells. Are we that slide? What five cell initiatives? Okay. Hello? Hello, yes, I'm hearing you, but because it was too much time, can you finalize? We are the quantitative self and quantified self in the collaboration basically is an initiative. And started uh, something like uh, 30 years ago when people were using mobile devices to monitor them, but also sharing the data with other people. So self like basically. That is making movement, but it's now appearing in uh, numerous uh, details, details, and uh, solutions that have started back. So, in the next slide, a preliminary report where this monitoring of uh, daily activities like sleep, stress, and other daily measurements can actually be useful for doctors when they provide this. So they would love to have how people 
can see how much can see, how much to go walk. That's to associate with how the system goes in life. Not only whether they are scared of the system, but also if the effect of the system is now associated with the kind of activities that the patients are doing. So in the next slide, I'm uh, going to show you examples of uh, this technology called monitoring individual systems, individual systems, that practically is not possible. This is a typical home in the Salonici where we have uh, intervened minimally in fact, accomplishing uh, the treatment of smart TV and mobile devices for monitoring systems. The next uh, slide, see some of these. So we have established a technology by the 2014 five core of the species as a people living on the road. And we have been monitoring them with these devices when we started measuring them. Two years, so it's a significant set of data every day monitoring, uh, collecting data, five core, different things. Some of these uh, data appearing here. At the top you can see for the clinic in the assessment of the geriatric depression along the time. The time is one very important. At the bottom you can see the effect of these exercises in the working speed of the individual. So we can monitor how much how fast the work is in their own home. And if ever associate this with the kind of intervention, the subscription, the service, or the lab, this is not how it's possible. And you can see this chain that has uh, the second part of the red curve shows the effect, the physical pain in the side that this guy starts having in school. And therefore, he's improving the work. By physically learning it is on call. So it's a unique measurement of the status, but also using MTL intervention tools. While the environment is like one store, this is not lab measurement, this is forms completely on their own, people completely on their own. Thank you, Professor. <coughs> Thank you, Professor Bobilis. Uh, so I will, uh, if you uh, let me. I will send uh, your presentation to uh, the colleagues that are interested. And uh, I will be very happy if you can uh, come to some of our next events. Moreover, here in uh, the audience, there are some of your colleagues that you know very well. Colleagues from uh, Technical University, from Medical University of Varna. So best regards from our audi audience and uh, bye. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I want to continue our panels now and uh, next uh, people who I really want to invite here. I want to show you and to represent first of all. So these are two people here. So please uh, take your places here. Uh, Professor Pavlov, Professor Kuznakova um, and uh, Assistant Dr. Jalez, please welcome. Uh, so, first of all, I want to tell to all of you that these people are really brilliant. And uh, I'm really happy that uh, they find uh, me as a partner and uh, as a person who they can work and discuss the topic. So it's really, really very, I'm very proud of this. And uh, we discussed with them earlier 
uh, how to do the things and who will be after whom. But uh, maybe before this, I want to share several photos only uh, about uh, common work with them. And this is some kind of a proof for it's not uh, empty words and political words only. So, actually, we start uh, communication uh, with uh, most of you after previous conference, or let me say during the conference, because Maureen was participated, and I was in the process of searching for a lecturer in neuroscience, and after some several tries, successful or not, he decided uh, to do this course for us. So the first thing that uh, happened to me was that uh, me, a professor in one university, I was uh, lecturing from a system from another university in very, very different field of study. And I really can say that uh, studying things, uh, learning things about medicine are more difficult than studying computer science. So I'm sure of this. Uh, maybe for some of them, like for Professor Pablo, he is uh, going and getting deeper and deeper in programming. And maybe he is more successful in programming than me in medicine. But somewhere and someday we will meet, maybe. So this is the photo of the conference last year. And um, here are some pictures from our lab where we were in this course. So it was very, very funny. Uh, a lot of colleagues and students were invited there. So this is another place in order to prove that it, this was really true. It's not something like to say because we're in the conference. And at the end, after representing our group uh, to Professor Fogo, then he represented us to his uh, head of department, Professor Tonchev. Now we have a communication between, between two departments and we are negotiating something to happen formally in September. So um, I am not authorized to mention these things in details. But let me say that in this group we have different meetings with this type of person with our students in different master degree programs and we have this thing that they will go and explain professionally and I will not explain this. They will go and explain this problem professionally and it took for us a very much time to understand basic things in medical point of view. But when we think about all of this on the algorithmic and data point of view, actually, it's not difficult. It's normal case for me. It's not decidable at this moment, but it's not something like medicine. So it is something from our science. So that's why nowadays we promote people who have hybrid profile, because we now even know people here who are from the data science group and they are now in, in this room that the most qualified and the most well-payable people in the world, these are people who are analy analytics, data scientists, but who are uh, also domain experts. So only to be analyzer, it's not enough to be successful. You have to be domain expert in some area in order to be more successful. So here are actually also some um, trials for a lot of people. So we have two students that they have results on this data that colleagues prepared. They have tried some things, they have some results, we're comparing results. So this is very, very interesting for us. And this was the starting process. We started the process all this way because I really think that uh, the people have to start their research work informally. To receive some kind of results, to get some kind of culture of a team, ethical issues and emotions between them, and then to say, okay, we are ready to formalize, to receive money, to be whatever is possible, to write articles and so on. Now, I will give the floor to one of them, uh, to
something with the text maybe or something. Okay? Huh? It's not that the text is not clear or there isn't any. There is a point. Okay, sorry. This is from day two. Well. Uh, so let me tell you why it came up with your cancer yet and what can we do about it. So let me use a totally plausible example. So imagine Earth as a random hardware mistake leads to a nuclear war. So everybody, almost everybody dies. So imagine the whole continent is shattered. So when we see Earth from space, we'll definitely see changes, something bad happened. Then we'll start searching for what exactly was the cause for this devastating damage. So we will, we will need to zoom in in order to identify in greater detail what happened. But eventually, we would have to zoom in so close in order to see that a single random trivial technical element, small function, which led to a signaling cascade, which then led to some errors, which led to the nuclear war, whatever. So now you can imagine how a large-scale damage can occur from something really small, something which is in, indefinitely smaller than the thing which we are observing from space. And that's the case with the human body. So what we as doctors are able to examine on the living patient is to imagine looking at Earth from space. That's a really low resolution information. So we need to zoom in closer in order to figure out what happened with the organism. So this is a human eye. When we zoom in further, we start to identify specific structures. So the branching pattern of the vessels indicates uh, the presence of health or disease. Then we zoom in further and this is actually a live footage of um, the blood flow in a human capillary, and we see changes in the behaviors of cells. Then we zoom in further into a single cell. So that's an image of a single cell. The blue thing is the nucleus. Every single dot which you see is a specific molecular machine made up of different parts. So we need to zoom in further, up to the level of the molecules in order to uh, examine their functions. So this is a motor protein that carries stuff inside the cell. If this malfunctions, it is associated with specific diseases. So let's imagine the scale. A single small element, a pin, for example, or whatever hold, compared to the earth, is the same as analyzing these molecules, and when a single molecule malfunctions, we have disease. So imagine the scale. Uh, we have a hundred trillion cells, and each cell has roughly a hundred trillion atoms and more than a million different types of components. If one more functions, as I said, everything goes bad. So how can we examine this? How can we deal with this amount of variability? So uh, I will show you two approaches. The first is the scientific approach. This is a piece of human tissue. This is an image of the human pancreas where the insulin is produced, whatever the blue things are the nuclei of the cells. The big red thing is, if you've heard the aisle of Langer House, which produces insulin, whatever. So this is a typical image. This is a typical research image that uh, we analyze in order to draw conclusions uh, about uh, what leads to disease. The problem is how to analyze this image uh, in a way that can lead to statistically significant uh, results. So we use different uh, computational techniques in order to quantify cells. Problems are, however, as you see uh, on the image below, that uh, when nuclei are overlapping or we have uh, different signal intensities, we have a hard time automating all of this. And since we need to analyze actually thousands, billions of cells in order to get statistically significant results, doing this manually uh, is inefficient. Not only inefficient, it uh, doesn't produce any results. So let's uh, see how modern computational methods uh, can tackle this challenge. So the same image containing a lot of information can, uh, if we develop good algorithms that can analyze the image, we can automate the process. So a computer can do overnight something which uh, all laboratory researchers need to do in the course of years to produce the same amount of data. 
Uh, another example, those are two cells which you see, and a computer can really uh, segment and quantify different machinery inside the cell. So those are different machines within the cell, and we need to analyze and track their behavior over time to check what happened. Okay, so that was the first uh, part. The second part is the clinical application. The same thing which we do in the laboratories to discover new causes of disease. Pathologists do to diagnose disease. The pathologist is the doctor who diagnoses uh, your condition. So pathologists analyze pieces of uh, tissue from the patients in order to determine what happens with their cells and to determine the cause of the dysfunction. So a single pathologist needs to observe hundreds of microscopic slides per day. And they can't afford to produce high quality images because they don't have time. So they use images like this one, which contain uh, too little information and they need to infer from that. And now modern approaches uh, utilize artificial intelligence in medicine that can help analyze these images and can rapidly expand, the, increase the number of diagnoses that can be done in a single day. So that's something which uh, people are working now at the moment. And uh, I want to end with uh, an insight which I had yesterday. Uh, this is on the future of medicine, so the, the marriage of medicine and technology. This is on the future, this is the present, and uh, something cool. In this room, today, right now, we have all the talent needed to tackle these problems. So what we need to do is just work out and together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Probably you uh, are thinking about uh, how to go to be a student uh, of Marin now. Okay, you can. <laughs> And now, uh, this uh, topic will uh, continue from uh, uh, Professor Pavlov from the same uh, university, medical university. So, please, welcome. Uh, hello. Uh, after uh, what Professor uh, Genesov did to introduce very good the problem that we face as a, a researchers in a very specific field, although it's a very vast field, uh, medicine, I'm going to uh, explain actually uh, what we uh, find out that we can do to uh, tackle these problems. First thing was that we discovered that we cannot, we cannot do this on our own, right? So, uh, well, I, I'm a teacher in uh, anatomy and uh, I teach anatomy since and anatomy and cell biology since 2002. And uh, of course, a significant part of my doings is to torture students, as they can confirm here. Uh, anyway, another significant part is the research, and we are interested in neuroscience mainly. And we personally, I'm interested in the image analysis, both uh, microscopical, uh, the portion that uh, Dr. Genesov uh, focused on, and also, however, medical imaging, because medical imaging is also a very important part of the medicine currently not only for diagnosis, but also for research. Uh, also, I have uh, been blessed with other interests. Uh, I am very interested in data science because I wasn't very uh, content with what I learned in, uh, in university, so I just uh, developed my interest in there. And from there, I got to scientific computing and uh, also interest in optimizing different processes between humans, so basically learning and research. Anyway, uh, our work as anatomists is actually, although quite mysterious to most of the people, very straightforward. We are taking a human, the human body, we take organs out of it, we slice them and look what's inside of it, right? Anything that a small child does with their toys, etc. Right? Curious child. So we are slicing the brain, we are looking at this, we are using different imaging modalities, and we are staying in different places so we can see what is there. And for a long time this was very useful because we didn't know what is there, we didn't know uh, anything, we didn't know qualitative relationships and basically we wanted to uh, describe everything. So this was the description of phase of the science and it was very important. Anyway, currently, 
we are um, living in the age of the science-based medicine and uh, uh, only the descriptive information is not enough. So we're going to the fact that we need to take even more uh, quantitative data from these images. Even more uh, current technology allows us to gather very quickly huge amounts of uh, imaging data with different modalities, at different levels of research and of uh, observation, and basically also we can relate this data with each other. Unfortunately, as uh, medical doctors, we have no idea how to correlate data. Okay? And this is a huge problem. So it may be seem very, very easy and straightforward, very short step from the imaging to the actual data that is produced and is analyzed and used for uh, decision making. However, if things go smoothly, due to the problems that we already discussed, uh, the most uh, smooth uh, algorithm that may follow, uh, or more of exactly uh, a description of the process that uh, takes during this, uh, in, the, in between these two phases, seems like this, right? Uh, basically, everything goes uh, haywire very quickly. And this is the smoothest uh, uh, processes. You, you must uh, actually multiply this or uh, lift to a power uh, to understand how everything goes in our research. Although the graphics are very smooth and very uh, precise, but we actually are not sure all the time what goes in between. So I, that's why I was very happy uh, when we were contacted, when I was actually introduced to uh, the team of uh, Professor Monchera and the students and the co-workers uh, and also, um, uh, and uh, we started working on these problems. So one of the big problems in this uh, particular uh, task is uh, the fact that uh, 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 taking part in humans. So uh, when a human is uh, doing a manual uh, evaluation, uh, we are subject to multiple biases, which are basically part of our physiology. And one of these biases, I'll just give an example, one of these biases, you, you know this uh, optical illusion, I'm sure, but it's still, some of you may be not convinced that the, the green and the blue are actually the same color. And you are, but they are, right? And you are uh, well rested and uh, are paying attention currently because I hope I didn't talk too much uh, until now. And still you are forced into this bias. Just imagine a person who was clicking on cells at, uh, for, uh, let's say, three, four hours. And before that, they were teaching just how great the error would be in this uh, particular uh, moment. So this is what the, re the reliability of our data is currently. And however, it's a very reliable data, actually. Anyway, what is the solution? The solution is to reduce the human intervention, to automate everything, to uh, increase the robustness of the uh, uh, algorithm and the fluctuations in the experimental conditions to cut the parameter choice steps that are made by the human. And of course, this will lead to increased reproducibility, uh, reduced processing in analysis time, it will increase reliability, reduce cost, of course, both in time and in uh, real money. And of course, we might have students and doctor students happy because actually they have to do this uh, tedious task all the time. Anyway, uh, we had a very uh, significant uh, success from this collaboration which I'm not going to go into detail, uh, and uh, this will be explained in much further detail by other uh, colleagues from this uh, informal current group. But I want to focus on our plans for the future. Basically, what we want to do is to be able to select cells and quantify them automatically, and then use this data to make decisions based on real data, scientific uh, you know, data mining uh, Algorithms. Uh, so, uh, what we plan, and so currently we had a very successful informal work, but it is time to formalize this, and we have a very good opportunity because the Medical University of Varna uh, had a very good start with their uh, research institute, 
And this research institute is actually uh, due to the um, fact that they won uh, won a very huge grant in uh, from European research area. They're expanding, so we are we will be applying for uh, the creation of a multidisciplinary image analysis uh, research group, which uh, will uh, basically. Uh, um, from this group will benefit most of the uh, most of the divisions of this research institute. This research group uh, is uh, the idea is that it will contain uh, both uh, biomedical and data science and development divisions. Which, uh, of course, in the biomedical divisions will be specialists, which are uh, specialists in histology, in pathology, medical imaging, in microscopic techniques. In the data science development, of course, we need uh, people uh, which are uh, good in numerical analysis, data science, machine learning, etc. Uh, at some point of time, we probably will probably uh, want to uh, invite also people which are uh, specialists in optics and uh, imaging and uh, physics and light. But what are the goals of this group? Mainly, uh, we want to expand the imaging capacity that we have currently. We want to improve the existing algorithms and we want to adapt algorithms existing in other fields which we do not know about but probably may be very useful to us too. Uh, of course, we might be able you know, to develop new algorithms and approaches to this science and the most important goal would be to translate all this uh, work into something useful, into the diagnostic uh, everyday medical practice, not only uh, to use it for research. Uh, why not develop even novel imaging modalities? Because this happens all the time, every day, actually. Now, what, do we do? Uh, what are the immediate plans? Of course, our immediate plans is to turn this uh, task of creating uh, data from imaging into a walk in the park, which won't be easy, but I'm sure that it can be done very, uh, still can be done. Uh, another plan that we have uh, is we were contacted recently by a, a group in uh, Switzerland which are trying to correlate uh, MRI imaging data with histology data and basically to develop algorithms to uh, receive uh, uh, high definition uh, information from uh, live in, uh, in vivo MRI imaging. So we are looking very uh, forward very much for this collaboration. This will be one of the um, projects of this group that we are uh, talking about. Of course, uh, we also have plans to develop, uh, this is an ongoing project which is currently on hold, but still uh, for automatic measurement of sympathetic cardiac adipose tissue on CT scans, or automatic quantification of uh, plaques in multiple sclerosis on MRI series, but, so basically, we uh, want to expand into all levels uh, of definition uh, in, the, uh, in the vast field of biomedical imaging and to be able to implement data, uh, data science uh, into our uh, everyday work. So I want to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much to Christian. Uh, I want to share also that uh, if you people who don't know us want to join us, welcome. We need a lot of workers who we can teach how to do basic things and who you will do dirty work for us. This is a normal way of how to do science in the world since the beginning of the science exists. It's nothing wrong with this because participating in such type of teams you will learn a lot. Um, and also we are preparing the two books about programming uh, in Python for special purpose for view image uh, editing and also analysis. So if some of you colleagues want to join this, people from companies, if you want to join this welcome join our efforts, our groups, and the good news is that this group will be formalized in, in September. Um, now uh, I want uh, to give uh, the floor to Christina and um, 
Krishna, let me uh, firstly introduce uh, you. So she's working in Technical University Varna, and uh, when he come back to Varna from Greece, that's why she is friends with Professor Bonidis. Uh, she brings her huge expertise in Varna. So we have a very, very uh, good scientist uh, in another university. So let's do not quarrel between universities. Let's co working together on the huge topics. Because, uh, sorry for that introduction, but because when some of us feels uh, bad because of some illnesses of his parents or of his relatives, he starts thinking that he can use his knowledge for science, for things that are for human beings. So we can start writing algorithms, doing this for computations like you, without no effect for some something benefit for the society. And uh, it's very good to go in a study group where you can be involved to help to some people for the human development. So please, uh, first of all, I want you to share with people your speciality because actually it's very interesting also. I'm a medical engineer. Okay. <laughs> so um, my name is Kristina Zdnakova. I'm a... Um, Probably one of the very, very few biomedical engineers in uh, Bulgaria. I graduated in the University of uh, Patras, and Professor Babidis was my teacher also in the course. So it was uh, almost uh, 18 years ago. <laughs> so I came back to Varna with Maria Curie um, scholarship, and uh, I'm a holder of Maria Curie grant for uh, contribution of science to society. And thank you again for your very nice invitation. So I, um, I hope that we can go away with you and your team, since we already uh, do very, very good cooperation with the University of Varna and uh, with the hospital, the University Hospital. So this is um, the team. Um, just a uh, uh, few people, but uh, very important. So we have. Uh, Three biomedical engineers, all of us, uh, graduated in the uh, uh, University of Patras. And we have uh, software engineers, uh, physicists, and behind this group uh, are the people from uh, University Hospital of Varna uh, who provided us with the data. Uh, so we did a really very good uh, job. So now I will um, uh, present you this marriage. It's my colleague there between uh, universities, hospitals, and industry. So the result. So maybe you know we are uh, we are working in the field of breast uh, imaging, and we are looking for a new radically new uh, breast imaging technique that uh, may screen the cancer as um, earlier as possible. So to do this, we needed a really uh, realistic tumor models, and to have such uh, a realistic uh, tumor models, we needed data. So in uh, Bulgaria, we uh, got help uh, from the uh, University Hospital of Varna, from the team of Professor uh, Radek Vilashkin. Uh, so within the frame of uh, European Project Maximum, so they uh, uh, provided us with uh, CT data from uh, breast catalogs. And uh, based on these uh, CT images, we did uh, segmentation image processing and uh, in, by using image processing techniques we managed to extract uh, uh, realistic tumor shapes. Also we got data from uh, Alexandrovska Hospital in uh, Bulgaria and um, also from City Clinic from Sofia and also data from uh, Belgium with uh, our partners. So the team of software engineers they uh, did the um, software with this software, we uh, managed to extract um, uh, realistic tumors. And we needed these tumors in order to compare a uh, simulation level. What is uh, the advancement of the proposed uh, new imaging technique for uh, screening the breast? Um, so we also, uh, we also advanced a lot with uh, modeling, so we also did a lot of uh, modeling of uh, such tumors from uh, data. We uh, are also very good in uh, 
uh, modeling techniques. Uh, and uh, uh, at this point, we are trying to verify the different models with uh, our um, physicians in the hospitals, how realistic are they. So all these, uh, for this, uh, all these uh, tumors and models are now uh, placed in a, a Maxima project database that is built also together with uh, uh, industry. Uh, and uh, now we just uh, finalized yesterday the project with the European Commission so we can open this database officially to researchers and um, uh, other institutions. So we can use data uh, uh, free of charge uh, for uh, research purposes. So I just share, share with, uh, for example, with uh, um, I started with it with the G, for example, General Electric, with uh, their research uh, team. So we have the breast as realistic as possible, and we just took one of these breast models and imported the you know, in the breast model. So we uh, this is how the, the the model slide um, and the size, and then we did the comparison, of, uh, for example, of computation of the mammography and uh, uh, the new proposed technique uh, called phase contrast uh, uh, imaging. So this is now uh, on the um, um, implementation. Um, also, uh, now we have everything uh, in uh, such a level. Uh, in uh, at computational models and uh, uh, to test a technique, a uh, new imaging technique, we cannot use uh, the, the, the women to expose them. So the best way is to now to prepare a realistic physical harm. So uh, we uh, had a big, uh, big challenge in uh, preparing such a model because, uh, you know, the printing techniques, I saw some of printers, we already had for one last since 2015. For that time, uh, there, there were no representatives uh, in Soto Bulgaria, so we voted directly from England. But uh, uh, the problem with, until even the uh, last six months, was that uh, these printers, they use just one or two materials to print such uh, physical functions, and they that's not enough, and uh, to get to now, together with uh, uh, cooperation from a small medium enterprise from Greece, we are developing a mechanism for printing directly from CT image directly the best. And uh, even now, we are presenting the results. So, your model, we have uh, uh, the model, for example, realistic, and then you, you can do and you can prove your imaging technique. Still a lot of work in this uh, direction. And finally, um, it is um, the cooperation to represent a few techniques, all the surgery techniques. And for our small patient, uh, it's a uh, uh, we did with uh, our um, clinic, for a clinic for animals. So this uh, turtle um, had a problem with the shell. So we used absolutely the same. Uh, uh, software developed by the team for image proxy. First, we scanned the, uh, the, the turtle uh, using uh, spectra, using the CT um, for animals. And then based on uh, this, we did the segmentation of the shell. And this is the interesting that we suggest we uh, suppose that uh, the shell is symmetric, so we just uh, Use the missing part for the missing part. We we took uh, uh, the right the right part and then with a lot of imaging, uh, image processing techniques, we managed to recover the this shell. So then we printed with our fused deposition modeling on our printers. And I'm uh, sorry, so this is the uh, the shell recovered. So I think that uh, really we can cooperate a lot, not only with uh, you know the universities, but I think the industry and uh, business we should be should be involved very strongly, strongly in, in, in research.
Okay, thank you for coming. So, uh, there was a month or two before, and uh, notice uh, the next uh, lab uh, one uh, meeting with business, and uh, there one of them uh, say that uh, there aren't uh, any scientists around. Uh, we don't know what these people are doing, so I really. Uh, Invited them to come today and to see what type of people and researchers are there in the city. And uh, I think that all of these people deserve your applauses because they are working really hard. Congratulations for all of us. And I'm really happy that uh, this time uh, we don't need to go to please uh, to regional media to come to make one photo. So here we have a real person from real specialized media, from ICT media. <laughs> so thank you very much. So, and because I'm really honest, I will tell you that several times we are giving uh, our competition of data retrieving and analysis for the other for uh, awarding and nobody awards us because they awarded other things, I will not mention which one, in order not to, to say something wrong for another type of specialist. And the usual explanation is that the people from um, some authorities and politics and uh, companies, uh, companies I mean another type of structures, not companies, they don't know what we're doing. And that's why, uh, <laughs> but we know, and we deserve uh, their awards, please. And that's why what we have to do, we, get, we have to go to publicity more over and over to explain that we are brilliant, we are really brilliant in order to let somebody to hear this. And this is what we're doing today. Uh, and also, um, we know that uh, if some of us are very good, uh, it's not enough because uh, there is one uh, condition how to evaluate professors and one of it is he or she is created a new group, a new uh, science branch of research, something new. And this something new, up to now, is not necessary to be created with robots, up to now. That's why we need to participate and to work a lot of humans. So, um, I will close this panel and I will give some analysis to the next one. That after the break, we're going to start uh, on time. And we will see some people from business who are doing their business innovatively because they are using research. And uh, in one of the representations, for example, there is one uh, funny title for this representation. And uh, we have here some discussions in the department that um, we don't uh, want the people, you and other people who are watching us uh, now, to see that uh, we are boring because we are professors. So I want to tell you that everything that we show now could be represented on this way. That's why Christian is doing this, I'm sure, in order to be recognized and understood by the general public. So of course we have to do this too. This is also a part of the science because we know that a big and brilliant scientist can explain very simple, very difficult things in a very simple manner if he or she is an expert. So thank you and see you at 1.40.